created using Powtoon.
sense of direction And I need a strength and protection Walking away with you I go walking away with you And when, I, when I'm faced with a tricky temptation I abandon the whole situation Walking away with you I go walking away with you Oh, what a fair, safe plan Just walking hand in hand I didn't have you to turn everything to, then where would I tell you? There'd never been more than a single breath away. I have never felt so much security knowing you're with me, and I'm so glad that you find. Since you tore it all away And I'm so glad Though it hurts to know I'm leaving Everything I ever thought that I would be Once I held it in my hand It was a kingdom made of sand And you threw it all away I can't believe that I can say that I'm glad Take my life A living sacrifice Knowing it's the least that I can do Make my life A living sacrifice
Hello folks, my name is Ralph Friedrichs. I just want to share my story uh, with um, my situation back in 1981 in the United States Marine Corps. I was sitting in a chapel during boot camp and a uh, chaplain tapped me on the shoulder and asked me to come into his quiet room. As I was walking into his quiet room, I had no idea what he wanted from me. It was then that uh, God was setting my life in motion. Uh, so the chaplain sat me down and he says, Ralph, I've noticed that you like to help people, you motivate people, you're always walking around with a smile. And I wanted to know, this is the chaplain saying this to me, I wanted to know, Ralph, would you like to uh, volunteer and become a lay leader? And of course, I had no idea what a lay leader was. Uh, so he explained to me what a lay leader was. It's somebody that is a liaison between the recruits and the chaplain. So when the recruits have issues, problems, or anything uh, like that, they go to the lay leader and, uh, I mean, excuse me, they go to the chaplain as the lay leader uh, to, to uh, let the chaplain know of the situations that are happening. It was then, in 1981, that God already had a plan for me and, and what when there from from that point on was that God realized that no matter how long it would take for me to achieve what God already knew what was going to happen to me he would let me go down into the worst extremes in life so from 1981 as a lay leader and I'm going to show you the medal now with a lay leader to front and the back this is the back of the medal and then the front looks like this so in 1981, at Par Paris Island, South Carolina, when I became a lay leader, God already had my life set in motion. But again, he wanted me to set my own course in life. So I went down the years and the course of my life and, and uh, did some of the worst things possible to my own body uh, through alcoholism. God already said to himself, well, I'm going to wait for Ralph to uh, get close to hitting rock bottom. So from 1981 until 2011, which is 30 years, God came to me again and he said, Ralph, are you ready to continue helping other people? That's when I um, formed Mastic Beach Outreach 2011. And what that was is for uh, older people and uh, mentally and physically challenged people that my wife and I would help them by giving them clothing, food, uh, possibly like in one case tires for someone's car and um, so God said okay he is getting better uh, but he's still not ready to do what I really wanted him to do so in 19 excuse me in 2011 I continued my alcoholism uh, to the point of 10 to 15 shots a day as time went further, two, two years down the road, it became worse and worse with my alcoholism. In 2013, God finally put his big hand on my head and says, Are you ready now? That is when I hit rock bottom. June 22nd, 2013, I reached out and I finally admit that I had an alcohol problem. It was then when God lifted me up and, and set my life in motion for today, September 2nd, 2014. So from 2013 until 2014, I continue educating myself and you, others, through my websites, through my, uh, my uh, videos on how to battle with addiction. And God saw this and he said, he, he said to himself, Ralph is still continuing helping people. So in between 2013 and 2014, as, as time was going by and, and I proved to God that I was really reforming myself, uh, that God uh, introduced me to uh, Dr. Luis Gonzalez. I had been toying with the idea of about becoming a substance abuse counselor until I ran into uh, an article about recovery coaching. So I thought it was very ironic that God had planted Dr. Luis Gonzalez from starting point, that S-T-A-R-T-I-N-G-P-O-I-N-T-M-N dot com, 844-414-844, into my life. Dr. Luis Gonzalez gave me the educational uh, programming to turn me into a recovery coach. So between while I was training for Dr. Luis Gonzalez to become a recovery coach and today my father comes from South Carolina to visit and we're looking at my shrine which my wife calls a shrine which is all my Marine Corps ribbons and medals and my father asked me, Ralph, what is this medal for? What is, what is this particular medal for? 
And I then said to myself, here's where it all came together. I finally realized what that medal stood for and how it influenced me in my life. It was back in 1981 that God knew already that I would eventually, towards the middle uh, or 60% uh, of my life, be out to help other people, to continuously help people, to motivate people, to coach people. So it was from 1981 to 2011 that I ran my life to the ragged ends, to the pit of the worst. And then from 2011 to 2013, even worse than that. And then June 22nd, 2013, finally helped myself up with the grace of God. And in 2014, became an addiction recovery coach. And all that epiphany came to me due to my father asked me what this stood for. This particular silver medal. When he asked me that, it all finally came together, that God had bigger and better plans for me. And this is what I'm telling you folks, there is a plan for you. No matter what the plan might be, you don't know what it is, but there is a plan for you. It's just a matter of you figuring it out. So why don't you let me help take your life back? Thank you. God bless you and have a sober day. Good morning and welcome to Take Your Life Back. Today is September 4th. It's about 3.30 in the morning. I just want to share with everyone something this morning. Uh, I saw a demonstration uh, maybe about a month ago in reference to our dark side and the power of prayer. If you continuously pray over and over and over again, things will eventually become clear. Although that a lot of times when we pray to God, we don't get answers right away. Uh, but if you continuously pray, over and over things become clear. So the demonstration involves this bottle and if you see the inside of this bottle is all dark liquid. That represents our dark side and this cap represents our limitations. So we as a human, which is the bottle, have limitations which is this cap. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this bottle into the sink and we're going to do a demonstration. So let me put that there. I'm going to turn the camera around so that everybody can see it. And hopefully you folks can all see it now. Okay, so you see the bottle. I'm gonna turn the water on. Okay, so now everything inside is dark, which represents our body and our inside. And what I'm gonna do, and this clear water represents our prayer. So you see the continuous water running. I'm going to now, as the prayer, uh, as we're praying, I'm going to lift our limitations, which is the cap. And we're going to slowly add our prayer to this. We all go through dark times. I mean, I've had some dark years. I just didn't understand everything that was happening. I'm going to admit it that I'm not a super patient person. I tend to want answers right away and know what's happening and when I, uh, what I can do to solve it. I don't like not being happy and confident about things. It's just not who I am. But when I get down, it takes a lot for me to get back up. If we pray for a sign, which is this, the water is prayer, but just give up because we feel like God's already heard our prayer and he knows what we need, but he hasn't answered. It's kind of like when we were kids in a toy store and we kept asking our mom and dad for toys, but we never got any results. Yeah, it never worked for me either, but you get what I mean. Anyway, that is exactly what's happened to me in the past years. I have prayed and prayed and prayed, but haven't really gotten any results. The answer I thought God would give me, uh, and especially in a time of, of frame, I thought my problems would be fixed, which was all before 2013. Then, in 2013, my cap of limitations was lifted. This is the cap, remember this now. was lifted off the bottle, which is my body. Here is where I will just show you how that worked for me. So basically we all have dark sides, which is what's in the bottle, was in the bottle. We are facing and we take the limitations off our mind, which was the cap I lifted. Don't limit what he can do because we have to just trust in the Lord. That sometimes even after we pray and we just give up. And it is often why we get defeated. However, even though nothing has really changed, we just keep praying. That's the prayer, the sign of the prayer, the flowing Lord. Just keep praying and never ever give up praying. And if we do that and devote ourselves completely to the Lord, He will pull us through. The dark times will go away and we just have to be patient. I know it's hard. Being patient truly is a virtue. But by never ever giving up on prayer, it's going to show you that 
God will eventually answer all your prayer. And the more we pray, which is this water going into the bottle, one day everything will become clear. You see how clear this is now? That is the power of prayer. Folks, I think that demonstration says it all. If we had a bottle which represents our body and the bottle, uh, everything was dark on the inside and the water coming out of the faucet represents the prayer day after day after day just keeps adding to the darkness which was in the bottle. Eventually all that prayer has to turn what was dark inside this bottle which is our body has to change and become as clear as this water in here. That, folks, is the power of prayer. Good morning and welcome to Take Your Life Back Today show with Ralph Friedrichs. Today we're going to talk about the 10 ways to stay drug free. What do you need to do other than the willpower that I hope you have to stay away from drugs? What are some of the things you need to say to possibly peer pressure, to friends, things as such? Those are the 10 items that we are going to talk about today and uh, we are going to talk about that right now. As soon as I get these two uh, commercials out uh, to you because they're important commercials and the first one as always is my friend Dr. Luis Gonzalez from startingpointmn.com. You can reach him at 844-414-8444. That's Dr. Luis Gonzalez from startingpointmn.com. Dr. Luis Gonzalez can help you through your recovery. He can help you go right from your recovery excuse me, from your addiction to your recovery, hand in hand, day by day, 24 hours at a time. He will never, ever possibly make you talk about your past because really, honestly, the past is gone. We cannot change that. Only therapists and counselors usually do that and bring up the past. What we do as addiction recovery coaches, and Dr. Luis Gonzalez is one for 30 years, is he talks about today. What are you going to do about your addiction today? And what is your plan for tomorrow? That is what Dr. Luis Gonzalez will do with you as your addiction recovery coach. So call him at 844-414-8444. Now, as far as his other part of the business, which is to turn you, yes you, into an addiction recovery coach, he can help you become an addiction recovery coach if you have passion, professionalism, and a personality, and you have some sort of addiction background. Maybe it's battling your own or possibly helping friends or family. Call him today and tell him that Ralph Friedrich sent you. Call him at 844-414-8444. That's Dr. Luis Gonzalez from startingpointmn.com. Now, globaleyeglasses.com. They are focused on saving your money. They have glasses starting as low as $6 and going up to about $49. Now listen to this because this is really important. These prices, whether it's $6 all the way up to $49, include the following. They include single vision, regular plastic, clear lenses. That's regular prescription, clear plastic lenses, non-coated, and a cloth and a case, all for as low as $6. That includes the frame also. It can go up to $49. Now you might ask, okay, what about if I need progressives? They have them. What if you want a line bifocal? They have them. What if you want transitions? You know, when it changes indoor to outdoors? They have them. They also have photochromatic. They have polarized lenses. And they can also make the lenses, lenses as thin as possible. That's at globaleyeglasses.com. They are focused on saving you money. And remind I want to remind you all that I am a board certified optician. And I can help choose your glasses and I'm very familiar with globaleyeglasses.com so text me at 631-599-0218 and I will help you with your glasses. That's globaleyeglasses.com where they are focused on saving you money. Now if you want to check out my new website at www.takeyourlifebacktodayshow.com that's www.takeyourlifebacktodayshow.com I have uh, on my page two, which is uh, under the title of my story, I have all the latest episodes from these shows. Episodes like today's, 10 Ways to Stay Drug Free, will be on there starting tomorrow.
go to www.take your life back today show and take a look at all the good stuff go to the last page under comments and read the thousands of comments that i have received also you can go to www.clearviews.info where i have all the 411 all the information you possibly need on addiction on recovery go there and take a look i have page after page after page of information, but you need to go there, www.clearviews.info. Ten ways to stay drug free. That is the subject to today, and that's an important subject because we face battles of alcohol and drugs every day. We might not have addictions to them, but we face people that might, and we face situations we might get into consistently and constantly. So these are the 10 things that I came up with, and I just want to say number one on my list is something that Nancy Reagan brought up many, many years ago. I believe it was 1983 she came up with this slogan. What do you think that slogan is? The slogan is, just say no. It is that simple. There is no one out there that can be forced to do drugs, can be forced to do alcohol, unless you choose to do so. All you have to say is no. Just say, I'm good. That's the best way to turn down drugs in a social uh, setting is to establish a firm position and just say, no, I don't want to drink. I don't want to do drugs. If you just say no, it becomes so realistic to other people eventually because you consistently say no and people will respect that. Eventually they will. They might give you a hard time in the beginning, but eventually they will. Number two on my list is don't lie. It is better not to lie by trying to make up an excuse like, I just had some, so no thank you. Because uh, when you do that, you're just doing it to fit in. Don't give the impression to other people that you just had drugs and or alcohol, and that's why you don't want any now. You need to be honest and you need to tell them the reason you don't want any right now is because you don't want to do drugs and alcohol. It is that simple. Number three on my list is stand apart. People notice people who don't like to follow. People will notice the difference in you. Unless you want to be a sheep, keep following. You want to follow somebody that's doing drugs and alcohol, someone that's ruining their... Uh, their brain that's ruining their internal organs and that is going to ruin their life. If you want to follow it, then go ahead and do that. Don't say no and say yes. But if you want to just say no and you want to prevent having a lie about not wanting to do drugs and alcohol, you need to stand apart. People do not like people that don't follow. They do not like people that stand apart and that's great because you don't want them to pressure you to do drugs and alcohol anymore. Number four. Number four on my list is if your friends respect your sobriety, they will not pressure you to do drugs. Who are your friends? That is the question. Number four is uh, who are your friends? Your friends are the people that do not and I repeat, do not pressure you to do drugs and alcohol. Those are your friends. Number five on my list is don't preach. I am here alcohol free for uh, about a year and three quarters now. That's right. But I am not preaching to you. What I am doing is sharing my experiences and my knowledge that I get daily from doing these shows. I will not preach to you. Once you make it clear about your sobriety, leave it alone. Yes, it is your job to go out and help others, but don't preach. In other words, don't constantly say, you need to stop, you need to stop. Leave it alone. Number six, invest in your future. Drugs get in the way of your ways to succeed, so stay away from them. Drugs and alcohol affect your job, affect your finances, affect your relationships. So you'll never succeed in anything you do as long as you do drugs and alcohol. Number seven, improve communication with uh, friends and family. Many folks turn to drugs 
in a way to cope with issues. So the best way not to even have to worry about turning to drugs and alcohol is not create the issues. By learning to communicate with your friends and family better and, um, and, and, and dealing with today's uh, stressful uh, issues is one way to prevent you from having to turn to drugs and alcohol. Number eight is don't believe the myths. Drugs do not make your life easier. For anyone that tells you that by doing drugs and alcohol, your life will become easier, it is simply untrue. It will not make it easier. It will actually, in fact, make your life tougher. Number nine is find a passion. This is a huge one because I truly, in my methods, believe that if you find a passion in what you want to do, instead of drugs, instead of alcohol, it really works. What is a passion? A passion could be doing sports. A passion could be writing music or maybe playing music. A passion could be writing, writing a book, writing in your journal. Passion could be knitting, sewing. Passion could be uh, interesting things like uh, maybe taking a hobby like skating, playing a, 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 which I guess they all fall under sports, but the point here is is that if you take up a passion, things will become easier. I will tell you my passion, which started way back in 1981, which wasn't even a passion then, it was really a request by, I believe, by God which was to, be, uh, to become a lay reader in the Marine Corps, was to help people. That was my passion. Well, that was my role. Uh, it didn't become a passion until the, uh, I became sober, which was in 2013. My passion now, my daily thoughts are to help you, my audience, to go into your living room, into your kitchen, into possibly the local jails, to go into homeless shelters, into nursing homes, to give you the message of hope. A four-letter word is so simple, hope. And what is hope? Hope is something that we believe in. And what do we believe in? I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and that is my hope. Number 10, find role models and positive peers in your circle. No matter how it may seem, everyone is not abusing alcohol and drugs. Find the ones that are not. They're not that hard to locate. You can find someone in your neighborhood that you want to hang out with that's not doing alcohol and drugs. Someone in your job that's not doing alcohol and drugs. Going to the local churches, you'll find plenty of people. And if you're in a relationship right now and you have just given up on drugs and alcohol, but your other half, your boyfriend, girlfriend, spouse, is still heavily involved, you need to really contemplate on, and I hate to put it this way, on leaving that situation. Either that person needs to sober up or you need to leave the situation because you cannot, as a sober person in recovery, be around people that are going to do uh, drinking and abuse drugs. You just simply cannot be there. So that is something that you really need to contemplate. Uh, I will tell you, if you do, for some reason, lose your partner due to your sobriety, it is best not to jump into a relationship right away. Go through the stages of getting your system cleaned out. Go through the stages of learning how to live in recovery and, and, and find your passion first and, and find ways to, uh, to possibly improve yourself and then get into a relationship and try to locate a partner that uh, is drug and alcohol free. These are the 10 uh, ways to stay drug free. And I'm going to go over them really quickly one more time. Uh, number one, and Nancy Reagan came up with the slogan and became huge in the school system back in 1983. And that slogan was just say no. Just say I'm good. The best way to turn down drugs in a social setting is to establish a firm position. Just say no. There is no, okay, maybe, uh, all right, maybe one drink. Just say no. Don't lie about it. It is better not to lie by trying to make up excuses like, oh, well, you know what, no thank you right now because I just had some when in fact you didn't have some. Just by saying no, you're standing your ground and more power to you. 
Number three is stand apart. People notice people who don't like to follow, and that is great because if you, if your legend or your reputation says he's or she is not a follower, that means you're not a sheep. You don't just go or like a salmon downstream. You are swimming upstream. Number four, know who your friends are. If your friends respect you uh, and your sobriety, they will not pressure you into doing drugs and alcohol anymore. Number five is don't preach. Once you make it clear about your sobriety, leave it alone. It is not advisable to go out there and, and use yourself as an example to force someone else to uh, uh, get uh, sober. It is okay for you to have a passion to help others, to possibly give your experiences, your message to them, but do not try to put so much pressure on them that it becomes preaching. Number six, invest in your future. Drugs get in the way if you're a way to succeed, so stay away from them. You could lose your job because of drug and alcohol abuse. You could lose your relationship. You could financially have a, a meltdown. So in order to succeed in life, you need to use the first slogan, which is just say no. Stay away from drug and alcohol. Number seven is improve, communi improve communication with friends and family. A lot of people turn to drugs and alcohol because they're having stressful issues in life. Possibly communicating with friends and family, uh, possibly uh, uh, going through stressful situations at, at, at the job. So if you learn to communicate with your friends and family, learn to communicate with others at, at your job, that prevents uh, stressors, as I call them, and it will not trigger possibly relapse if you are sober now. Number uh, nine is don't believe the myths. The myth that seems to be out in the real world is that drugs make your life easier. Wrong. Lo drugs will make your life tougher. Drugs will possibly make you lose your relationship, make you lose your job, make you lose lots of money. So drugs do not make your life easier. Number nine, find a passion. That is so simple because we all have a passion hidden somewhere down inside of us. Your passion could be sports, writing, could be hand gliding, could be knitting, sewing, could be what I do. My passion is to go out and help others, to bring the message. My message I want to bring daily into your living room via my camera, into your kitchen via my camera, into the jails to help those people that are possibly sitting there uh, due to a DWI, uh, into the homeless shelter because people used all their money for drugs and alcohol and now they don't have a place to live. That is my passion, to bring out my message to you. And, and maybe you want to do the same as a passion. Number 10 is find role models, positive peers. That is a simple thing to do. Every job has somebody there that might be just like you, sober. Every church has people that have no drugs and alcohol uh, uh, desires. Every neighborhood has these. You need to pick and choose who your friends are going to be and who your friends uh, shouldn't be because you don't want to be involved with people that are doing drugs and alcohol if you're trying to get sober. Alcohol and drugs will, and I repeat, alcohol and drugs will eventually kill you. They will kill you if you abuse alcohol and or drugs. They will eat away at your mind. They will eat away at your organs. They will eat away at you. They will eat away at your family relationships. They will eat away at your job relationship. They will eat away at anything that you care about, which is your body, which is your are your friends, which is your job. Drugs and alcohol will kill you. Remember that. These are the 10 ways to stay drug free. Say no, don't lie, stand apart, find out who your friends are, don't preach to your friends about it, invest in your future, improve, uh, improve communication with friends and family, don't believe the myths that are out there about drugs and alcohol, find a passion in your life uh, instead of alcohol and drugs, and find role models and positive peers within your circle. Those are the 10 ways to stay drug free. So if today, I hope, is your day to finally say, I have had it with drugs, I have had it with alcohol, 
then let today be the first day. And you might ask, what do I need to do this round? Well, number one on the list, because there are two things, but number one, more than anything, it's you have to finally say, I am done. I know I'm an alcoholic. I know I've used drugs. I will not deny the fact that I need change and I need help. Once you have lifted denial, the rest kind of falls into place. Once you have to lift a denial, you reach to God for guidance and direction. And people always say to me, well, why do I need God to help me through my struggles with alcohol and or drugs? Well, let me ask you this. If you didn't need guidance and direction, would you be sitting there knowing that you have a drug and or alcohol addiction? You obviously cannot guide and direct your life away from that. So what you need is your higher power, which equals the word hope. You need something to hope for to help you. And God is the person to do that. God is the solution for your problem. You, in combination with God, can work this whole addiction issue out. It's very simply put this way. Your body is like a ship. Your mind is the captain of your ship. Will you go into any rough ocean as the captain of a ship without navigation? Will you? Well, if you need navigation, that's where you need to reach to God and ask for guidance and direction. God will navigate you, your ship, your captain, through any rough ocean, any rough sea, and he will make sure that your voyage is a clear sail. God will never ever turn his back on you. Yes, even Christians stumble and fall. Even Christians face problems daily. But the difference between Christians that believe in God and people that just think that they can go through life without God is the step one. Christians run into problems. They sit down. They pray to God. And God always comes through for them. It might not be immediately, but eventually the answers come and the solutions come with those answers. I am a perfect example of that. For all the years, I kept saying, I don't need God to help me. I can beat alcoholism without any other uh, help. Wrong. It is when I reached for hope, when I reached for God, in combination with the fact that I finally said I've had enough with my alcoholism, that my life changed 360 degrees. My life went from 10 to 15 shots of vodka a day to now helping others see what I have seen. I am now concentrating on helping anyone that wants help with their alcohol and or drug addiction. Two years ago, I was the person that would tell you I don't have a problem, I drink socially, but yet I would drink from morning till night and again morning till night repetitiously 360 days a year. In the meantime, while I was doing all this drinking, things were falling apart around me that I either didn't see or refused to acknowledge. Family issues were falling around me. Financial issues were crumbling around me. Anything that I held dear to my heart was crumbling around me. And that's not because I didn't care. It's because I cared more for my alcohol. That's the difference. Alcoholism is a disease. Drug addiction is a disease that will take your life over, engulf it, and forever, unless you change it, keep you there. Remember, alcoholism equals the devil. Drug addiction equals the devil. And the only way to beat the devil is for you to reach up to God. Let God help take your life back. It is that simple. So if today is the day and you made that decision and you have reached to God, come up with a plan on where to go for treatment. Will it be a treatment center? Yesterday I covered the 10, or no, I covered nine top rehab treatment centers in the United States. 
Will it be a treatment center or will it be AA? Will it be my methods? If you want to reach out to me, my methods work great. It's 804, uh, excuse me, it's 844-405-HELP, 844-405-HELP. If you don't want to verbally talk to me and you just want to text me at 631-599-0218 or you can email me at ralf at Take Your Life Back Today Show. Ralph at Take Your Life Back Today Show. Contact me and I will help you with my methods. But no matter what, find a strategy plan to help take your life back. And whatever you do, if you have a relapse, which happens quite often to people in the beginning, I had six or seven, dust your knees and keep moving forward. Do not give up. Never ever give up on yourself or on others. Dust your knees and move on. And whatever you do, never ever go back into your old ways again. Never ever start drinking. Never ever start doing uh, uh, drugs again. Just meet, move forward and things will become better. Once you have that done, then you need to slowly build your immune system up to where it was when you were born, which is to eat normally again, to, to uh, accept things normally again, because when we're drunk and when we're under drugs, we have a defense shield around us where nothing or no one uh, is uh, uh, capable of telling us what to do. So now that you're sober, Accept when people love you. Accept when people want to help you. Accept all that. More importantly, accept God. Folks, if you're watching me and you're saying, okay, maybe tomorrow is the day where I'm going to change, I want you to listen to this for one minute. As you sit there right now, and you're breathing in and out, and you're blinking your eyes, there is someone in the world not someone, probably a lot of people in the world that are breathing for the last time. Their end is here. That are blinking for the last time because their eyes are now finally closing for the last time. My question to you is, did those people have a chance for change that you have right now watching me? You have a chance for change today. Did those people have a chance for change? Some of those people might be in the jungles in Africa who never even heard a message about drugs and alcohol. Yet, maybe they were consuming it. But they didn't know the difference between getting help and helping themselves or just continuously living like they are. And now they are passed on. Once that happens, it is too late for change. And change should be for two reasons. The first reason would be to change for yourself, to make your life better, to make your health better. But secondly, you have to remember, people will remember you by your last chapters in your book. People will remember you by that. So your last chapters could be your last year or two, and don't let your last chapters include alcoholism and drug addiction. People will remember that. Let, it, uh, let your chapters include your last chapters in your life, Helping others, helping your neighbors, living a life of sobriety. Let those be the memories that you're going to leave behind. When, when I shall pass one day, I know that people will say, he turned his whole life around and he made his life better towards the end. Yet, if I would have passed two years ago, which I could have a couple times because of alcohol overdose, People would have said, well, he was an alcoholic. He had to drink, and that's what killed him. I don't want people talking about me that way. So I change not only for me, which is the most important, but I change for my legacy. Let it be you. Folks, I want everybody to know that a sober today, I guarantee you, will give you a better tomorrow. And if you start thinking positive, positive things will happen in your life. Eliminate the negativity around you. There are people possibly in your life that are the naysayers that will constantly complain. Stay away from that. Start thinking positive. Anything is possible if you think positive about it. I hope to God each and every one of you folks has a great day. But more importantly, I hope to God 
that you have a sober day, and may God bless you. Take care.